Vince Williams Jr. The first time we're seeing VCU in this tournament. Remember, they had the buys to this game because they had such a terrific season. They are the ones more rested. But Richmond has their tournament legs, as we keep on saying. So Gustafson grabs the tip. There's Golden. There's Tyler Burton. Gilliard, the steel king, leads the entire NCAA and steals and almost a steal early on, but Burton able to recover back to Gustafson, and Gustafson bangs home a three to start. Yeah, that's something he's very, very adept at, and if he can really get it going early, I've seen him throughout the season really put numbers on the board. He got some trouble early. It brings Ace Baldwin over to come get the basketball. See Jaden Nunn. Jaden Nunn trying to get it back, and this ball rolls out of bounds. Good start for Richmond. Richmond used to the atmosphere. They've been here the last couple days. Had a gritty win against the Rams, the URI Rams, last night. They were down quite a bit of that game, and they pulled it out. A scary team to play in this tournament because of their veteran leadership. Here's Gilliard. Gilliard hit a huge three yesterday. Right at the end of that game, there's Grant Gold trying to get to the basket. Rebound Ward. And here's Ace. Ace Baldwin, pull up, Ace Baldwin, pull up, goes. The lefty, and he has not skipped a beat since that Achilles injury, and coming back, he looks like the same player. Coming off a huge breakout rookie season. In VCU, they're led by a couple of left-handed guards, Vince Williams Jr., Ace Baldwin, they can both score. Great hustle defensively, now a steal from Nunn. Be careful with that Havoc defense. Nunn back out to Williams, and Williams, listen to this crowd. That's what Coach Rhodes wants to see. It all starts on the defensive end for this squad. That leads to offensive energy. Here's Burton stolen away. There is such a different intensity for Richmond to get used to early. Burton, up, oh, couple free throws headed his way. VCU here doing what they do best, getting in passing lanes and then utilizing that steal into transition. You just can't stop this. They like to get going early and they do it off of the defense. And you mentioned it, Havoc. That's been a, a thing that Shaka Smart started at VCU. Mike Rhodes has continued that with a little nuances, little changes there. But they like that style. Coach Rhodes, he is on my Mount Rushmore of favorite coaches to talk to. <laughs> you and everyone in else, any he's great. sport. I mean, he'll give you anything. He's got the best stories. You hop on a 15-minute Zoom. Next thing you know, 45 minutes of your life spent talking to Coach Rhodes. Such a great teacher of men. It spends so much time outside of the basketball building with all of his players. Really cares about speaking into their lives as well, and it's why they love playing for him so much. Yeah, he hired an outside counselor to really get get the guys the mental aspect of all the pressures they deal with and coach Rhodes said he even talks to the counselor himself <laughs> I don't blame him <laughs> free ball a little bit short he said it's a true sign of strength to be able to go in there and share your feelings as a young person I think it's amazing Humility. awesome that he's willing to do that understands the importance of doing that yeah me too it's really knowing where your lane is and knowing what you're good at and having people help with what you're not good at well put here's Burton He's good at just about everything on a basketball court. Back out to Gilliard. Gilliard for three. He's picking up where he left off last night. And Jacob Gilliard, six steals yesterday. Four assists. He had ten. He's going to do what he does best. And he'll need a little bit of help, a little more help offensively here tonight for them to get the W. Here's Williams. Three ball and circles out. Jacob Gilliard, a name that we call quite a bit, gets the open look. Now, this is something Chris Mooney's been telling us throughout the year 
and throughout this tournament is he wants to see his team shoot the ball better. They're getting open looks. Throughout the season, they got a lot of open looks, but they just haven't been shooting as a, as a high percentage as they'd like to. Going to be pressure on Gilliard to break that press all night. Ace Baldwin across the formation to Vince Williams. Five on the shot clock. Hurry into the lane. Can't get the roll. Now Gilliard over to Golden. And for a big man, you'll see he'll catch the basketball everywhere. This time Ward. Beautiful block by Ward, who is trailing Golden. What a defensive play from Hassan Ward. I mean, you've got to love the rotation here defensively. Grant Golden had no chance with Ward there. Great job Woo! not fouling, just getting a piece of it. Here's how you are currently playing, and this team is currently playing with a lot of tenacity, and they're winning ball games, and so much of that is because of Ace, the lefty. He has just been competing in so many ways and on both ends of the floor. He's a two-man two player. Sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland. Here's She's Burke. a two-way player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's KO tried to get it back to Burton and it slapped out of bounds. It's hard to compete with the length of the Rams. I mean, they are just all over the floor, the energy on this end. Like Coach Rhodes said, you know, some people think it's because you press. Gilliard wants a three. Gilliard can't get it. Curry gets the rebound with a little bit of flair. But he was saying, you know, people think just because you press, you can't play good half-court defense. Forget about that logic. They play that shell, disciplined half-court defense, deny, disrupt. This is one of the most fun defensive teams to watch anywhere. It's really suffocating, and they don't just suffocate in the full court. Like you said, they do it in the half court, too. And, and the shell drill is something we used to do all the time in practice. It really just is about principles and sticking to those defensive principles, knowing where to rotate, knowing where to be on the floor. Nice pass. Look at Ace Ball with no look pass to Curry. Wow, just like that. That's a Patrick Mahomes type look. So quick, yeah, it, it really is. That's a, that's a nice analogy. Like a quarterback out there. See Grayson, 15, somebody that Burton spoke so highly of. He said he's somebody from practice who just led us in everything. Shooting, you name it, he's finally getting an opportunity now to do some of those amazing things they've seen in practice on the game day court. A uh, nice movement here in... Ace ball Woo! with a little no look and the jam from Keyshawn Curry. I love the backdoor cut. He sees hey, I'm overplayed. Let me go back door. Good two man play. That's Grace who we were just talking about, and he just basically threw it away. A little of this press from Richmond. Coach said they've done it certain points of the year. Expected to do it again in the tournament. Got a glimpse of it yesterday. Worked a little bit as they battled back in that game to get a win over Rhode Island. Well, they forced some turnovers against Rhode Island yesterday, which led to their offense a bit in the second half. And they were down 13 or 14 points at halftime. Richmond came all the way back. Gustafson. Picks up that foul. It's going to be his first personal. You see Marcus Sahonis checking in as well. Junior from Portland, Oregon. Coming back from a concussion. Coach Rhodes said they're going to need his three-point shooting. Started his career at Washington. Really good shooter there. Shot 39%. Where's number five for VCU? How under control he says before he threw it away right on cue. Here's Gustafson running back the other way. 
poked away. Gustafson able to recover. Now Grace, Grace back to Burton. Burton can spray, and Burton's off the mark. Once Burton makes that first shot, it'll help build that confidence back up. And those are the threes he was talking about. So Hodis getting going early. He's got the green light. That is what he does. He spreads the floor out. There's Grace backing down into the post. Grace gets it right back. Taking his time on that block and finally blocked away. A good defense there from Deloach. Go right back to Sahonis. Why not? Hear those BCU chants, and this one's way long and a foul on the rebound. Deloach gets the call. Deluge between his freshman and sophomore seasons back in high school grew seven inches from six foot to six seven added another two inches he's six nine now ability to play multiple positions and I think coach Rhodes more fascinated by what he can do defensively and we've seen a bit of that already if you can defend you're gonna play for coach Rhodes that's just his style and he recruits a lot of length and he sees he sees it in the young players too they might be green they might be raw but he, he makes sure that he develops them like a player like ward when ward came into the program he was pretty green he's gotten up to blossom quite a bit under Rhodes. levi stockard in as well that's him over there defensively look at williams come over and help now ace baldwin gets his hand on for a steal up ahead, see if they want to slow it down. Instead, they're going to try to give it away. Instead, they get it back now to Levi Stocker, and Stocker gets it home. You see Baldwin, the way that he uses that left hand, he is a lefty, but he zips it from the left side of the floor to the right so quick with so much strength and zip to that pass. 7-0 VCU run. Golden. Trying to work the post, instead just throws it to the VCU bench turnover. It's a three-point Rams lead. A lot of defense early. We knew this would be a defensive battle. It's been just that. It's a team, and it's purposeful. It's deliberate. It's how Coach Rhodes wants it. And it really leads to the offense, and he's got the kind of length that's able to do it. Mm -hmm. Recruits it just that way. Richmond scoreless the last 433. Three turnovers over that time for Richmond. BCU still on this 7-0 run. Stocker to Baldwin. Baldwin back out to Williams. Williams sharing the basketball. That's Kern, and now Stockard on the turnaround can't get it down. Burton rebound over to Gilliard. See how high out that defense comes. They're not going to sit in the paint. They're going to pressure and make it hard to see the floor. And that's what I like about their half court defense. How do you try to counter with now five on the shot clock? They got to speed this thing up. How do you counter all this ball pressure that BCU brings and how high they play this? You team? need to be able to beat them off the bounce. You need players that can break it down. As we look at Coach Moody in his 17th season at Richmond, and he's been just a really steady coach. He's proud of the way his team pulled through last night. Winning as coach in Richmond history. But you've got to win off the dribble, Jack, when you're being suffocated. There's Golden taking his time with it, and he walked. Five turnovers here for ways. Richmond, and Golden putting it on the deck. I mean, not ideal to have a big man 
facing up and dribbling, but he, we've seen him, he's able to do it, he just walks. Here's Ace back to Williams. Williams finds a lane, kicks it over to Kern. Look at Kern fly in the air. Now Williams put backs down. Yeah, it's Williams right there. The second chance opportunity. And he absolutely fills the stat sheet up. 24, Nick Kern Jr., 6'6", freshman, getting some big minutes as Gustafson into the lane. And one. Gustafson with some nice buckets here in the first half, and he's finding his rhythm in transition, and he's kind of an under-the-radar athlete. The way that he plays, he's really very smooth. Didn't do a ton yesterday, but had some important buckets and important opportunities. And this team just doesn't get rattled. I mean, you see their veteran leadership, and they stay in rhythm. Can't complete the three-point play, but that stops the 9-0 run. Ace Baldwin drew a foul on his way to the basket beyond the ground. Looks like they got Gilliard. Ace Baldwin, who's just been tremendous after that Achilles injury. He's racked up 58 steals in 20 games heading into this tournament. It shows that he can do it defensively too, but they call him the tip of the spear. Williams from way downtown. Six point VCU lead. Now Gustafson, he has that attack mentality and so too does KO. That's a great job. And Gustafson is impacting the game in more ways than one. Goes Kern, tried to get it across, but put stolen away. Gilliard has it. I think KO is also another player that can really get some opportunities here. He is such an athlete, played very well last night. KO can't get it quite to the backboard. And back to Williams. Ace Baldwin wants a three. Williams with the board, he's battling, he draws a foul. Looks like Gustafson and KO collectively were on top of him. They're gonna get KO with the personal. Well, we just saw Vince Williams, the first person to that basketball for that rebound, and then the possession before, just spotting up from distance, knocking it down in rhythm. Doesn't need a lot of time to release the basketball. Six, 11 and a half wingspan on that guy. <laughs> he has length. There's so many ways that he can make things happen offensively. Golden and Gustafson take a seat. First look at Isaiah Wilson. Coming into the game, sophomore for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Three ball won't go. That was Williams Jr. again. K.O. and K.O. is going to draw a foul working on Ward. Yeah, Nathan K.O., one of Coach Mooney's favorite players, their best cutter, the best cutter that he said he's ever had on any of his teams, and that says a lot. He's a, He's been coaching at Richmond for 17 years, but just one of those players that has thrived in his program and his system. He's thrived too. <laughs> Yeah, Gilliard. I would say so. <laughs> Gilliard with his second three of the night. Four players with a thousand points or more in their college careers on this Richmond team. K.O., Gilliard, Golden, and Sherrod. Now Brown Jones can't get it. Several super seniors on the Spiders roster this year. Unfinished business for them. Great. No good battle for the board. 
fly into the ground. That was Wilson who just came into the game. Jump ball. Possession right back to Richmond. And Jacob Gilliard, the grad player, one of those super seniors, has come to play. Nice job off the ball. A good little pick. And the finish from distance from the corner. This year already tonight. But they finished that game last night on a 17-4 run after trailing by 15. So you can never really count them out. Jacob Gilliard has eight. Vince Williams Jr. has eight for VCU. And I like what Chris Mooney said about just continuing to drive more here in this game. When you are being overplayed like that, I've been saying that to you, you're being overplayed and suffocated. You've got to take it off the bounce and orchestrate some opportunities and penetrate kick. C23, Jaden Nunn. He was the point guard that was thrown into the fire with the Baldwin injury. So he got some big minutes early in this year, and there's Nunn for three and right on cue. So you never want your star to get hurt, but getting Nunn some minutes early in the season to get him ready for tournament play has some value. And he doesn't play with any intimidation. Gilliard returns fire. And Jacob Gilliard very capable of some big nights. He only averages 12 and a half per game. Of course, we've talked about how he impacts the game in so many other ways, but he can really light it up. That only helps their offense even more. None wants another three. Back to back from deep. Two huge buckets from Nunn. Jaden Nunn, the freshman from Flint, Michigan. Solid freshman starter all year when he got those moments. Very consistent for him. At this play, I love this possession from Richmond. They were double teamed and they never turned it over and they passed out of the double team, got the open, open three for Gilliard, but then the response from Nunn at the other end, just trading threes here. That's why VCU's able to keep the lead. Nunn was a four, former Iowa State commit. Picked VCU over interest from Kansas, Butler, Arizona State, and others. Now Wilson had it stolen. And VCU basically just threw that thing off of the score table. Pretty low scoring game here so far. A defensive battle. Ask Coach Rhodes about that defense. And he said, yeah, it's similar to, in football terms, it's a disguise, right? We want to disguise our coverage. They have 10 different looks that they can throw at you. And so there's different moments where they'll bluff, they'll show you one thing, they'll rotate and attack you from somewhere else, but 10 different looks on the play sheet that he can go to defensively. It keeps you on your toes if you're playing against them. You've got to be ready for anything. I see that's the backing down that coach coach Rudy just talked about with Layla try to get KO backing you down a little one-on-one -on -one action try to attack and KO has the athletic ability to do this all day I, I just like his game a lot KO grad student from Montreal in Canada he's not necessarily a shooter I mean you'll see that with this free throw release here in about two seconds and uh he can get to the basket, player. though. Yeah, he really is like a, a Swiss Army knife. He does a lot of things pretty well. Can score in, in all around. Very good player. Ball handler, defense, can score inside and out. Has a nice sense of the game. And he really struggled from the line last night. So that's a good start from the free throw stripe. And he gets a lot of free throws just based on his style. And only, like you said, a 46% shooter from there. And a funny release point. Yeah, like Charles Barkley swinging a golf yeah, exactly. ball. <laughs> you knew we were going we to get that in the broadcast, but no matter what, that was coming out. <laughs> That's right. As long as he's hitting Touché. one, I think it's fair. Curry drives, 
is in. He had it stolen away. Right back to Richmond. That really good defense, though, from Richmond. They have kept their assignments here. And that's what we saw in the second half of the Rhode Island game last night. And they've come out in that regard a lot better here tonight. And we can't reiterate enough, VCU is rested. Not used to the arena. And that's what this pressure can do. I mean, how many times have we seen so far just a pass just being thrown out of bounds and you can't really figure out exactly what it is. Well, what it is is all of that constant on-ball pressure. It just disrupts you a little bit, makes you play a little faster than you would typically play. Stockard cut into the basket. One point VCU lead as we come down on five in the first half. Now Stockard puts it on the deck. Stockard using that big body of his. Stockard for two. What a play. I mean, that was just man play down low. Just textbook back to the basket move. 6 8 240 out of St. Louis, Missouri. Here's KO. He's going to try to attack Stockard. He's not intimidated at all. KO needs a fadeaway with it, but that won't go. Golden with the putback and the foul and one for Golden. And good job by Golden just maintaining his position, hanging around the rim. Just getting himself there for the putback. He doesn't bring the ball down. That's what I like there. He keeps the ball up high. Doesn't allow for any of the little guys to come and grab it. Great job. We had a big game against Rhode Island. 19 points. Very efficient. First points for Golden, but can't complete the three-point play. Now Ace Baldwin looking for something. Levi Stockard over for a screen. Ace with the pull-up. A little to the right side of the basket. Stockard and Gold. That's an interesting matchup. Keep an eye on 33 and 34. Keep an eye on Gilliard, too. Get out of here. Gilliard's reminding me a little bit of Noah Fernandes of our game before this from UMass. The way that uh -huh. he's just been so feisty and just playing with that sense of urgency commanding the recently how you're currently playing i can't stress that enough to the selection quite a bit but i do think for them to to, to give themselves a chance at an at large potentially you've got to get to the final you've got to get all the way to the final and potentially uh, if you don't win you've got to get there at least Let's go over to Layla for more on DCU. Uh, thanks, Jack. We saw Mike Rhodes talking to his team earlier, and of course, he's stressing defense, just saying over and over, let's get back to guarding. Let's get back to guarding. And then the importance of the shot selection. Yeah, and, and Layla, it's the first lead for Richmond since it was a 9-7 game. Gilliard's been good offensively. 14 points he has, 3 of 4 from deep. Well, they've left him a little bit open, giving him some looks. Two-point Richmond lead has been back and forth. Here's Gilliard. Burton also has not gotten a chance to get too many looks either yet. Gilliard from Curry Hill. Get out of here, Gilliard. Wow. He, he is, can't miss. He's in his zone. Give him the ball. Put on a dribbling display before he let that thing go from about four feet beyond the arc. We've got some great guard play in this conference. Ace, tough shot the other way. Won't go. Back to Gilliard. It's Levi Stocker who's been playing very high defensively, trying to force Gilliard to go around him. Picks up the block. And Jacob Gilliard is continuing his momentum here. Uh, he's pretty deep here. That ball handling is what creates that shot. He just creates space for himself. 
Nice job drawing the contact. He is so low to the ground. It, it is so tough to stay with him. Four of five from deep now. They get 18 points. Uh, if you're gonna leave it all out there at this point, you're fighting for your life. Really was not a good start for Richmond yesterday against Rhode Island, but it was guys like Burton, guys like Gilliard, down the stretch that just got gritty and showed some of that veteran experience, which is the uniqueness of this Richmond team. Guys that have all been here before, for the most part, they've all been here. They know what's at stake. Sometimes that can help you, and sometimes it can hurt you. Because <laughs> a team like Dayton, very young and almost naive to that fact. You just play really loose in that regard. So it's another foul for Gustafson on the cut. Picks up his second foul. 31-24 game. It's a 10-0 Richmond run as we come down to two in the first half. Williams, he was wide open and hits it. You want to step out on Williams, 38% three-point shooter. Three of five here tonight. One of the best shooters on VCU. KO underneath, just threw it up in the air. This is Williams with the basketball. 90 seconds left in the half and a foul. That time it's Wilson grabs a person. How do you settle this thing down if you're VCU? Well, I think that you get a good look here out of the out of bounds play and try to execute. They're trying to play pretty fast right now. And they have a half court opportunity here. But you don't have to force up a tough shot. And, and that was just really good defense from Gilliard. One of the best steals, stealers. Is that a word? I don't think so. He, he can really steal the basketball. Thieves? <laughs> Super disruptive. We'll go with thieves. <laughs> thieves. In the On country. the basketball court. He is unbelievable. Gilliard. Gilliard over to Burton. Now Burton from deep. And Burton bangs it home. I forget it. If Burton can get going. Richmond could have a chance to pull away. Now Williams lost it. Gray stole it away. Over to Gilliard. Gilliard from way out there. <laughs> Richmond's blown this game wide open. Eddie General. And he's got 22 points. The rest of the team has 15 points right now. Five Jack, threes. What is happening? Five threes in the first half, and most of them will come about halfway to half court. Head exploding. This is from a point guard. See if Ace or Williams can calm things down. Now it's Curry with the ball. Curry. Rottles into the lane, back out to Baldwin. 14 remaining in the half, five on the shot clock, into Ward, and Ward was fouled. From VCU, Ward moving without the basketball and just a, a reach in that time from Wilson. Isaiah Wilson, he's the youth in this lineup, appeared in 20 games as a freshman, made two starts. In the NIT, that was for Blake Francis, great guard on Richmond a season ago. Well, Hassan Ward, and I remember when he came in to Mike Rose's lineup and just the way that he's developed, he, he said to me, he looked like a baby calf with length for days. And <laughs> he has grown so much into his body 
He's only been playing organized basketball for four or five years. I, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Tons of length. Junior from St. Thomas and Barbados. 6'9", 215, but he's got a 7'4", wingspan. Now with one second, Golden! And Golden can definitely shoot it from right there, but not this time. Richmond ends the half on a 16-5 run. The last four minutes and 30 seconds. Gilliard with 11 of those points. Gilliard's on pace for about 40 in this first half. He's spraying from all over. 37-29 at the half. Going for the U.S. Bank halftime report. And Sarah as well just put Gilliard's stat up full screen. 5 of 6 from 3. 7 of 8 from the field. 22 points. In that first half, the senior from Kansas City, Missouri. Only averages 12.4. 5'9", 160 he runs, but he one of the toughest, <laughs> oh my gosh, one of the toughest basketball players you'll see. And some of those shots that he's been making, just impossible. Now, Golden battling down low, and quick turnover from the Spiders. There, they're going to get a foul, looks like. Let's go over to Layla. That was before the half began, and he said that we need to take away the threes. That's something we've been elite at. We are not elite tonight. He also said we need to get each other shots. I asked him about the corners, too, offensively, and he said we need to work on our spacing and get downhill, Jack. Thank you, Layla. <laughs> get downhill, get high in the air. There's Ward rising for a slam. Uh, I think Coach Rose will take that for a little offense. Hassan Ward. Now KO is really where he likes the basketball and Ward on the other end after the slam, the block. Now Curry on the run. Curry went up without the ball and right back to the Spiders. Uh, which is a terrific job here with the pass, with the placement, Ward with the throw down. And you have to love it. Five blocks right now from VCU. That's a big number too. Defensively. That 7-4 Hassan Ward wingspan has been showing up all night. You can't teach length. Here's Burton. He's got some length blocked away again. VCU, you think they had a fun conversation in at halftime. Coach Rhodes has them playing. Electric coming out. Now Ace Baldwin starting to get it going offensively. Ace Baldwin, not a big first half for him. Only two points. That's his fourth point of this basketball game. He did have five assists, though. He didn't take a lot of shots. I mean, he took a couple shots. Four-point Richmond lead. It was nine. Quickly back to four. Now here's Burton just trying to force something. Offensively draws a foul. But so much has really been happening for VCU based upon the block shots. Ward with a, a terrific job just knocking that one out and deflecting. These are the things that Coach Rhodes likes to harp on, the deflections. That is what they run off of. They deflect, they have energy, they get into their own rhythm. Burton can't get the first free throw to go. Burton named second team all Atlantic 10 on Tuesday. It's his third year, only his second tournament. His first tournament got canceled. We, we saw him get some late points yesterday. He had a pretty good second half. He did. Did not have a good first half. Can, can he repeat that here? It was just enough for them to get over the hump and win. Gutsy double-double he put together in the second half despite really not shooting the basketball like we're used to seeing from Burton. Burton had four points in the first half. Here comes Curry down the baseline. Curry. Lead to three. Gilliard pull up. See if he can keep that heat going. Uh, Gilliard think, this time way off. I think he got, I think he got hit. He thought so, too. Now this is Ace Baldwin trying to get it across to Williams. Lead to three. Gilliard pull up. See if he can keep that heat going. Uh, Gilliard this time way off. I think he got, I think he got hit. He, he 
Williams really did. He got fouled. He thought so, too. Now this is Ace Baldwin trying to get it across to Williams. Stolen by K.O. Now Gilliard. Lobs one back to Burton. Falling down defensively. Burton pull-up won't go. And K.O. can't grab the board. Ace Baldwin has it. Ace Baldwin, another tough shot. He's taking some really hard shots. Yeah, they're swarming him. They're not making it easy for him. Gilliard drives baseline, puts some crazy spin on that. Not enough. Curry has it. Three on three. Curry goes right at Burton in a block call. Burton thought his feet were set. Ref says no. Yeah, I thought Curry was a little bit out of control here. I, mean, I don't think that was the right call. And then Gilliard here, I thought he got fouled. And yeah, I mean, he did. He got, that's a wrist. He got some wrist action there. That's what he was upset about. I, I thought in real time it looked like a foul. And even looking back there, at the possession before. Certainly a couple misplays. It's a good eye by you. You're all over that. Here goes none cutting for the basketball. Instead, it's going to be Williams. Vince Williams pulls up a three from way outside. The money maker. He's had a, a nice, a nice game from distance. Tie ball game, 38 apiece. Gilliard to Grace somehow got a piece of it, kept the possession back to Gilliard. He checked high. And hey, he's feeling it. Just keep getting Gilliard the basketball. I'm not even sure we can count the one where he was fouled. The heat streak continues for Gilliard. percentage and tonight they've allowed 67 percent from distance for richmond they have just been feeling it from behind the arc that's been a game changer gilliard has 25 and we have not even hit the 15 minute mark in the second half six of eight from distance as you mentioned i mean his stat line could not be any better go inside this is poked away how curry's trying to run Gathers the basketball on the way down the court, and they'll reset with Baldwin. Here's Williams to the lane. Williams left hand, can't get the finish. Gilliard doesn't have numbers, so slows it down. Now down to K.O. They've been getting him the ball often on that block. Here's Grace, now Gustafson. Ten on the shot clock. Foul there on I think Curry. it was a foul. On the dribble. Yep, first foul. Key, they're calling it tight. First foul on Curry, one more look. Gilliard, who has been so low to the ground. And I, in the first half, I talked about how Richmond needed to take it off the bounce against such a swarming, sweltering defense. And that's what's happened. And a lot of that is because of Gilliard's ability to break down players. And Ace Baldwin's all over him. Heyo driving to the lane. Physical drive. Draws a foul on his way there. It's been physical in general. Get Brown Jones with this foul. KO here, nice drive to the basket. And that's where the foul is, and Richmond in attack mode. And they've handled the ball well. They've not turned it over. They've stayed in rhythm, and the tempo has been 
I think Richmond has controlled the tempo. Gustafson smooth into the lane. They have not gotten knocked off their rhythm. 43-38, five-point Richmond lead now. As Ace wants a three, has not shot the ball like we're used to. He's on a rough night. Richmond, no turnovers in the last 11 minutes. Now Grace, trying to back it down. Out to Gilliard. 10 on the shot clock. Back to Grace. Grace, easy access to goaltending. That's, Coming that's, over. Right. that's a great job. Terrific passing and a good find. We talked about Matt Grace just being that X factor for this team, an underrated player. And a really appropriate moment to make a shot. And how highly did Tyler Burton talk about Grace? saying he was the most improved player this year, passes the ball, knocks down the three at a ridiculous clip, leading scorer through all their summer workouts. He said he's just earned these minutes come tournament time. The chemistry with these guys is really impeccable. They've known each other a long time. Good pass into ace ball, but look at Hassan Ward. Work from the three-point line. Yeah, really threading that needle. Poked away. That was Ward again. Ward with a great pass back on defense. Pops that out of the hands of Gilliard out of bounds. Hassan Ward with a beautiful look. I, I mean, he placed that perfectly, strategically little bounce. I love the bounce pass. It's not used enough. You pass that up high, and that ball is picked off. Smart pass. Gustafson drops it behind his back. And some contact as he was trying to work his way toward the basket. Yeah, they're going to get none there with that foul on the way to the basket. So the lead's five. Curry checks back into the game. None will check out. Gilliard to Grace. Grace spins it around the basket. It was on the left side, went to the right side. Good looking, too. Uh, another nice job from Gilliard. He's been in the middle of everything. Mixing it up, drawing two, and, and pitching, whether it's interior or exterior. Now ace Baldwin. Well, Baldwin's gone cold. Grace grabbed it, but he grabbed it with his foot right there on the line. Grace playing some big minutes. He'll check out Golden coming in. A give and go. And how about the movement of Grace? Knowing, hey, Ward has left me. He turned his back. Defensively, you can't turn your back like that and allow the defender or the, allow the offensive vendor person to slip right behind you. He lost vision. Ball and man. <laughs> Baldwin just chucked that for Ward. Now this is poked away again. Williams is trying to run it down. And a foul called on Gustafson. He already has a couple. Looks like he got hit as well. So now Gustafson has three. And it was cool to see Grace got a standing ovation. All those Richmond fans standing behind the bench realize the minutes that he's putting in in this second half to build the lead back to seven. And just a touch foul. Curry, good cut. Tough shot. Curry can't get it to go. Seen some really good half-court offense from Richmond in the second half. Burton. Grabbing the back of his head. Gilliard, another deep three. This time, no good. Rebound, Williams. He's been really disciplined. That's what it's been like. And they're calling everything. Yeah. Everything. You've got to just really gauge how the refs are calling it right now. And you can't really play. Uh, you've got to be very particular. Every reach, they are getting you on. So Gustafson has three. 
Now that's three for Wilson. And steps. Poor offense it just continues for VCU. Cannot figure it out. How did they calm things down? They called Ace Baldwin the calming presence when he came back. Just hasn't shot the ball like we're used to. I mean, I think it really is all about just taking your time and taking good shots rather than okay shots. You've got to really work the ball a little bit better and not allow it to stick so much. And I feel like sometimes for VCU, it's stagnant. Look at Burton lean into this. But give credit to the Spiders. Their defense has been stout. Williams, good pass to Curry. I see they got a little bit of motion there, a little running the floor, a little up-tempo. They did that in the first half early, and I thought they looked better. Take a timeout. Five-point Richmond lead. VCU unable to find some offense, and all of a sudden, Richmond figuring out this half-court offense of theirs. Richmond on top. And he's 8 of 12, 6 of 9 from 3. Jack, I mean, we couldn't have gotten more out of him tonight. He's been performing at a high level. Had six steals against Rhode Island yesterday. He was impacting the game when his shots weren't falling. And then finally, late second half, started hitting shots. He's just done everything. That's what the great players do. I mean, they come up big when the limelight is on. Five-point Richmond lead, under 12 to play in the second half. This game's been back and forth from the very beginning. Now Burton, Burton with the pump fake, got Curry in the air, goes up. Two free throws headed his way. Burton's had to work for everything in this tournament. It has not been easy. Everybody's got his number. They're bodying him. A great job here just drawing the contact. And a little hezzy, the shot fake. Has struggled from the field today. A 1-6. of six. Similar game yesterday. But he did end up with a double-double by the end of the game. <laughs> yeah, he said his dad really pushed him on a rebound. He said, just go get rebounds that you don't think you can get. Just see what happens. Chase those things down. You might surprise yourself. And He's been great on the boards in this tournament. Hunt them down. That's the best way to even put it. You've got to hunt your rebounds. And he does do that. Dad played in two tournaments at Providence. Tells him all kinds of tournament stories, and it's made Burton even more motivated to go get some tournament stories of his own. Now Williams in the lane. Williams through contact, can't get it down. The putback is there. Ward having a great second half. And he's finding the rim, and he's hunting down shots as well. And there's so much time here. VCU's gonna try to take the tempo on their side. This tempo has gone to Richmond. So Golden passed up two open threes, tries to drive, but nothing there. No look pass to Curry. Curry can't handle it. But you see VCU trying to run the basketball a little bit. I mean, that's what they need a little more of. See that communication right there with Curry saying, just pass me the ball. It was the no look. Just a bobble in transition, trying to play a little fast there. Lead sitting at five. Here's Gilliard. Gilliard wants another three. Air ball. He sent it way over the rim. Now Curry. Curry in attack mode. Curry to the rim. Burton's flying over. And Burton got the goal 10 and one. Uh, you see that VCU is now upping the tempo here. This is what they need more of. Burton here. The ball is on its way down. And so there's a goaltending call here. It's a little bit late. It's a close one. So KO picks up the foul. Burton picks up the goal 10. Curry goes to the line, has two points, looking to complete the three point play. Keyshawn Curry playing the best basketball of his career, according to Mike Rhodes. I mean, that is just how, how he's been all season. Just his numbers have been terrific. 
a nice senior year. Can't get the free throw to go. He's had 17 double-digit games. Curry's that dynamic combo, a slasher. Always looking to attack the rim, as you just saw. A highlight real kind of player is Curry. Gustafson's open for three. He left it short. Williams and Ward fight for the rebound, and Ward ends up grabbing it. Williams working on Grace, draws the foul, no shot on the floor. Second personal on Grace. And again, Vince Williams getting to the deck. And I'm telling you, they are calling everything. So just take it to the rim and expect a foul call at this point. They're really calling it tight. You like the way they're calling this game? I think I'd like them to let him play a little more. Yeah. Williams. But they're trying to control it. <laughs> Look at Burton rise that rebound. His head was about above the square when he grabbed it. Here's Gold Gustafson. Get the ball back to Burt. Gold saves it to Burton. Ten on the shot clock. They got to go quick here. Into the lane. Burton spin move. Burton and one. Now what I like about Burton is that even if he's not playing the way we've seen him at times this year play, he comes out with so many crazy athletic moves. Look at this spin move from Burton. This is why he's an NBA prospect type of player. He's got that size, that versatility. Last couple days has had a hard time getting going offensively, but look up and he's got nine points. He hasn't taken a lot of shots. He's not one of those high volume players who's going to go out there and just chuck shots up when he's not open. He lets the game kind of come to him, which is what I appreciate about, appreciate about his game. I think it comes from, remember, he's telling us that he didn't grow up as the go to scorer, the go to man with the ball in his hand, so he's used to having to do everything else rebound, pass. Whatever it may be, and then he gets to Richmond, they start giving him the basketball and go, hey, you're the scorer now. He's like, this is a little more fun. It is a little more fun, a little more pressure on you, too. Giveaway, Ace Baldwin. Just threw it out of bounds. We've seen a lot of these turnovers mounting up here. Richmond's defense has been solid. Six-point Richmond lead. In the second half, ECU's had six turnovers, only one for Richmond. KO working that block. KO going with KO does. Yeah, I mean, he will back you down and shoot over top with a lot of ease. He's just so quick. He senses where the defender is, and he turns the right way. So Richmond... Extends that lead to eight. Ace Baldwin trying to cut back into it. Can't get it. Levi Stocker there for the board, but he lost it. Gustafson has it. Richmond just taking this one possession at a time, getting stops where they need to. Teo says, why not? I'll do it again. Teo thought he was fouled. He wasn't. VCU has numbers if they want to run it. Three on two. Ahead. Huge slam. and get the foul call. Now we've got just a pound for pound battle here. Nathan Ko taking it on the block, just commanding the ball. But in transition, you can't stop that. Oh, Nick Kern Jr. with the flush. He's getting help from his teammates this half. In the first half, Gilliard had 22, other teammates 15. In the second half, the teammates 14 and Gilliard only three. So, whole bunch of scores in the lineup, and they're using them all. 
one half looks a lot different than the second. Burton hits the first 55-48 game. And we're under eight minutes, 7-13 remaining. Burton's up into double figures here now. That's what they've needed because Gilliard's been a little bit more quiet this half. Hard to uh, hard to do what he did in the first half, though. Burton seven points in the second half. Here's Curry trying to drive. Curry draws a block. Burton can't believe it. How'd you see it? Yeah, I, I got to see it again. I mean, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. He was kind of still moving here, and, and he, I just think that that was the right call because he was moving. He sold it. But you can't really just stop and then throw your body down. It's not always it's not always a charge. So it's Keyshawn Curry at the line, been a contributor all four years at BCU, majoring in homeland security and emergency preparedness. It's the first time I've ever read that major, so I figured I needed to get that. Yeah, in that's pretty point. intense. <laughs> Out of Jacksonville, Florida. Curry over the free years. Throw. He's improved so much over the years. Just made a huge jump from his freshman to sophomore year and then you know obviously junior and senior year it's kind of been his his two years where he's just been so terrific he makes plays vcu needs to stop desperately inside to ko they had success right there on the block ko he wanted he wanted both he wanted that three-point play instead two free throws coming up Ko makes some terrific moves down low and he nearly finished that Six seven two twenty five how many times though do you see Ko just moving people down there on the block? I mean He out muscles people he does he struggles from the free throw line typically, yeah. which is the one thing that needs to improve for him. And, and he'll, he'll be tough to stop, but he's really that typical Richmond player who's thrived on just knowing how to play a high IQ. There it is. Saw him hit a couple free throws earlier, misses one, hits the second. Line. Curry gave it away. Steal. Here's Gilliard. Burton with the steal. Ahead to Gilliard. Gilliard's foul. And it's on the ground before the shot. One and one upcoming. Gilliard again with the handles. Catches Baldwin on his toes. And I think at any moment, Gilliard can draw that foul because he just is able to maneuver his body in a herky-jerky fashion around people, around defenders. Gilliard hits him. Gilliard 22 points in that first half. Five of six from three. Cooled off a bit in the second. There's his fourth point of the second half. We're about to hit five minutes here pretty soon and VCU is going to have to have a gut check this could be 10 point lead here for Richmond right now and it is with that finish Golden checks out and listen to the crowd Spider Nation <laughs> Spider Nation is on their feet all over this arena 10 point Richmond lead Here's Dunn. Out to Baldwin, Hassan on the roll. Here's Brown Jones, and that is nowhere close. Not a great shot. UCU has not moved the ball and gotten a great rhythm this whole game, really, offensively. Good block, good pick by Grace to get Gilliard some space. And now Kao with the putback. K.O.'s been a beast on that block. <laughs> 
61-49. BCU had been battling, but Richmond starting to pull away. But that's kind of what's happening here. And if BCU loses, that that does take away their their chance to me of getting in. Yeah, BCU has some work to do. Join the rest of the company on that graphic. Richmond, a 12-3 run, their largest lead of the night. Here's Nunn. Over to Williams. Williams back to Nunn. Nunn trying to work the lane. Drops it to Ace Baldwin. Baldwin to Williams. Williams in open three. Won't go. Rebound Grace. See, that possession was excellent. Richmond played de disciplined defense that whole series there. Balls on their feet, moving, communicating. That's been the key here. This is a low-scoring game because Richmond has done it on that end. Since the second half of the Rhode Island game last night, they've defended. Here's KO. He's been a key. KO draws another foul. KO has been backing down defenders all night. Just finding the mismatches. and He's just not afraid to take it at whoever is carding him. That time it was Brown Jones. And we've seen a BCU try everybody. Brown Jones, Stocker, you name it. There has been no match for KO on that block. Might draw Hassan Ward here soon. KO, that release, and uh, I think you heard us he's earlier. Making his to hit him. Yeah, he's making him. He's playing with a lot of poise tonight. Ugly form, but it doesn't matter. He's making him tonight. KO on the money. 63 49 Richmond continues to extend. He's been clutch. Has been. William, powerful move. Good left hand finish. Timeout. Coach Rhodes wants to have a conversation here. Lead is 12. Coach Rhodes so calm over there on the sideline. But VCU gets the timeout here and just a tremendous effort from which has been very impressive and very needed out of him. They need that offense, and that's why they've extended the lead and kept it there. They've also continued to defend at a high level. Almost the same game that he played last night. Gilliard only has one field goal this half, but it was a huge one after that VCU run. He drilled a three. Now Grace gets a charge. And that's huge. So VCU with Brown Jones steals a possession away. And you know out of that timeout, Coach Rhodes had to had to say, we've got to turn up the intensity defensively. We've got to pull out the full court pressure and try to get this game back into reach using our up-tempo style. The whole game has been in rhythm with Richmond's style. Williams, the lefty, goes back to his right hand to try to finish it. Somehow grabs the rebound and dribbles it right on the baseline. Ball back to Richmond. Uh, it looked like he was off VCU here. Here's Gilliard. Gilliard up to KO. KO has some space and decides to slow it down with Ward in front of him. Now KO. To Burton and Gilliard has been prolific handling the basketball. And he's had pressure on all day. Look at that ball handling behind the back. Gilliard into the lane. Floater won't go. Rebound. Grace though. 15 on the shot clock and a reset. Jacob Gilliard who loves watching Chris Paul play. <laughs> you can see why. He has kind of a similar game. This one's stolen though. Williams came over and took it from Grace. Now Williams to the basket. Williams gets the two despite the contact. You see that the energy and the intensity here from the Rams has turned up. So it's a 10-point game again.
Back to Grace. Grace can shoot threes. Not this time. Fight for the rebound in VCU basketball. Vince Williams has really been tremendous. And when he gets out and runs, this is when VCU has been at their finest. When they speed the game up. And he has just been a bulldozer to the rim. And our camera guy falls over, too. I mean, he's... He, he's He's definitely in the danger zone down there. <laughs> Gotta go check on him. He's got his eye through that lens and stuff to see sometimes. Wide open three. Ace forward. That's confidence right there. He's had a rough shooting night. Makes it when he needs it. Back to seven. VCU opened this half on a 9-1 run. We've seen Richmond pull away. Now back to seven. It's a 7-0 run for VCU. The last two minutes just to pat the game. It says forget about all that. That's the kind of game he's had. Swag. Welcome to my world, Jacob Gilliard says. 30 for Gilliard. Career highs, 31. He's right on top of it. But every huddle of the second half, as soon as they get over there, the coaches get together for a second, and Gilliard says, guys, get in. And he just talks to them all by himself for about two minutes. That's cool leadership. That's why Richmond is the scariest team, I've been saying, in this tournament to have to play. A lot Ooh. of veterans who are unafraid. And his cool head under pressure, too has relieved a lot of what this Havoc defense can do to you offensively. K.O. rises, foul called. One and one uh, coming. K.O.'s yeah. trying to figure out exactly what he's guilty of. Going to send Hassan Ward to the line. One and one here. Pressure's on, Gilliard wisely calls the timeout, take their time with this. We're under two minutes, leads 10. And look at everybody immediately come right around. Gilliard has been just like this the whole game. 10 points against Rhode Island, 30 tonight. Sure. He's been impossible to stop. And four steals for him is just casual. Break this press quickly. Here's gold. Ten on the shot clock. Gilliard called for the screen. Comes out. Passes on it anyway. Gilliard for three. Can't hit this one. Ward gets it to ace. A huge moment here for VCU. Yes. Curry down the baseline. Yeah, big time. And the foul. Yeah, big time and big time needed. A little hezzy. And then you've got to be aware of moving without the basketball, and Curry knows that when Baldwin has the ball. They called him the slasher, living up to that nickname in the second half. But that was the kind of urgency they needed. They needed to score very quickly. They need more than that. Here's Gilliard. Gilliard gets it ahead and a trap right there and a timeout as Coach Mooney was standing right on top of the VCU trap. A smart timeout. You get the opportunity here to kind of defense. That, that's why that's why this game has turned out the way it's been. And Richmond's just been on fire ever since that first half against Rhode Island been a completely hey, different looking team they've been waiting for that day they've been waiting to get on fire getting the opportunities throughout the season here's Burton stolen away Curry defensively great defense by Curry I think they called that on Burton 
Sure yeah, did. it is a foul on Burton. So that was just excellent hands from Keyshawn Curry. He's been all over the floor here tonight. And that leads them to the free throw line. Anytime VCU gets fouled, we... 74% free throw shooter. First one goes. Six point game. 110 to play. And two possessions here. Curry again. He has been money with the game on the line. 14 points for Curry. 12 of them come in this half. Jim Williams for a foul. Gustafson on the other end of it. And he'll head to the line. Gustafson hits the first, back to six. It's a 12-3 VCU run. Just before that free throw, here we go, Gustafson again. Richmond, a good free throw shooting team. Once you get into a free throw shooting match with them, it becomes difficult. Here's Curry sharing the ball. Curry trying to get it back on the ground. Everybody's diving on the floor. That's a huge stop right there. That Here's was a much, That was a needed possession for VCU. Enormous that they were not able to score there. Richmond got it back. And you can see the relief on Coach Mooney's face right there as he screamed right as. Gilliard ran by him, and I, I don't know who else you'd rather have the ball in the hands of with the game on the line than Gilliard. Look at just the calm of his presence, and he's like that at the beginning of the game with all the pressure that was being put on defensively. He's been like that late. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. No. He shows the emotion when he makes shots and yeah. he gets excited, and that's what I like when, it, when I see him light up and get excited because you don't see it a lot. He stays very cool. He is an awesome basketball player. Just very skilled. I mean, nobody handles the ball the way he does. And then to pair it with the defense, a career high 32 points for Jacob Gilliard. Poked away by Gustafson. I thought he was going to dive right into us. Listen to this crowd. They know what that means. Gustafson has been an animal. He has been diving all over the floor. It's been the accumulation of those little moments that create the wins, the big opportunities. It's the little things that first to the basketball, getting deflections. Gustafson's done a lot of that dirty work here tonight. I mean, a lot, we talk a lot about Burton and Gilliard, but Gustafson's done some dirty work. You know, we asked Coach Moody about the value of all the experience coming into a tournament. He said every day there's value. Anything I want to throw at them, anything I want to emphasize in a game plan, everybody knows their role. They know who they are. They're unselfish and get into tournament play. All that starts to pay off. And coming into the season, Coach Mooney didn't know if... Ace Baldwin uh, Ace hits a three. Back right to down. seven. But to start this season, Coach Mooney, he told us that one of the things he tried to emphasize with his group was, you know, I don't want these seniors to get bored. He was a little nervous that anticipate some fouls here. Who do you want a foul out of this lineup? Got Golden back there waiting at half court. Gilliard is the obvious shoot. target. They're all, they can all shoot. Here's Grace running. Gilliard, Golden comes down and he'll get the foul. Golden's headed to the line. Richmond is fundamentally sound. They've got a good group of players that can shoot from the free throw line. They're very disciplined. They have that concentration that never lapsed tonight. They've made 10 of their last 11 free throws. Uh, that's the experience factor.
you almost, you almost get the sense that Richmond flew under the radar coming into this tournament. And Williams picks up his fifth foul in that action. And heads over to the bench. 18 points he'll finish with. He was throttling to the basket. He was trying to do everything just to keep him in this thing. Offensively, fifth foul. And his night is done. He did all that he could do. He what did. they needed more of was Ace Baldwin. Ace Baldwin was held in check. And offensively, they just needed him to have a big game and he struggled from the floor tonight. I like coach saying Grant Golden works like a 5'10 walk on even though he's a 6'10 all conference player. Yeah. Conscientious in terms of his approach. He's loud, he works hard, he doesn't cut corners. He's the kind of player you want. Another grad student. Ace running the court, looking for something quick. Kick it back out for a three. That's off the mark. Put back and uh, foul on the way to the put back. So they're going to get Burton on that foul. I believe it is on Burton here. Burton and Ko were both there. I think they did get Burton. What do you make of Richmond for the rest of this tournament? We knew that both these teams, whoever wins this thing, as Curry fouls out as well, potentially had a chance if they win this game to go on and win the whole tournament. How do you view Richmond now that we've got a chance to see them twice? I think they could win the whole dang thing with the way that they've been playing here. It, you know, they'll have somewhat tired legs, but you know, they're going to face a Dayton team that is a little more rested, and that's not an easy thing to do but in a very physical and athletic Dayton team. It's not going to be an easy game, but Richmond is so disciplined. If they can play defense the way that they've played the last, well, this game and then half the Rhode Island game, that they can hang with anyone, and they need to get some offensive performances the way that they've been getting in this tournament. Hey, that's what they say. You just got to win it all. <laughs> that's right. Holmes was a monster earlier. See a good matchup with Golden and yeah. Holmes. I like this team. I like their chances. Holmes not an easy matchup for anyone. No. Tell you what else helps. This might be the liveliest crowd that we've yeah. seen so far. Knowledgeable crowd on their feet. Every time somebody checks out after a great moment, they give a standing ovation over on their way to the bench. It's a 75-64 spider win. And K.O., you see him in there shoving people. K.O. was huge in the second half. He was huge, and this is a little bit of a bragging rights thing, too, a battle between two Richmond-centric teams. As we mentioned, the Capital City matchup, they call it. 